Hi there, it's uh, Gizmo the Clown, Joseph the Magician here. I'm about to put my makeup on and I uh, figured I'd show you guys uh, how I go about doing that. It's uh, a little bit awkward for me to tape this because I'm facing a mirror and my camera is right next to me here. So uh, it's hard for me to track exactly what it's looking like there. So apologies for the camera quality if this uh, does end up getting posted and it looks not so good. I'll, uh, I'll uh, look forward to your comments on that and maybe I'll retape it. Now, first off I'll go over some of the equipment I'm using. This is a sock and it's filled with baby powder and that's going to be used to set the makeup after I'm all done. I have uh, clown white, okay, big uh, tub of it and uh, that is uh, Mayron, I believe, clown white and this is also uh, Mayron and that's uh, clown red, okay. Uh, I'm going to be using a, a sponge, okay. I think that's a, a latex sponge, okay. Um, and uh, rubbing alcohol is going to be used to clean my nose before I apply my Pro Nose. Of course, I've got some Pro Nose adhesive. That's uh, a latex adhesive. Uh, I'm going to need, I use one brush. Uh, I like this one here because it's got a, a little bit of a, a rounded uh, tip on it here. So it helps to apply it. You may need a um, um, sharpener. And then I've got white and black. Now the first thing I do is, uh, well this one's going to need a little bit of sharpening, so I'll just do a little bit of a quick sharpen here. And what I do is, the first thing I do is I outline my lips. And Lucky enough, I have little moles or freckles in my lash lines. I use my lash lines and a couple little moles or freckles that I have at the top here. And that helps me get it um, kind of perpendicular and the same size every time. And if it's not perfect, that's okay because you're going you're gonna to be applying the clown white and that's going to kind of... Uh, fix it all up in the end there and then I outline my eyes same way I'm using the wrinkles on my forehead so it's one of the advantages of being old when you're a clown is you have wrinkles and spots to go now what I did is I just uh, ran my sponge underneath the the tap a little bit just to get it a little bit damp and then you just sort of put it into the clown white and you're kind of dabbing and pulling some of the color off and then when you're going to apply the makeup there's kind of a a dabbing motion I mean you just push and dab all along and you get really good at this after a while if you need to apply more water you kind of get used to the 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 tact tacticity of the makeup. Mm -hmm. mm. And it doesn't have to be too perfect. People aren't going to be getting right up and ins inspecting you. I've never had anyone say that I did a bad job on my makeup. Even when I know, knew that I did a, a bad job of it. So. And then you do the same with the eyes. Covering right up to the line. Get a little bit more on there to cover up my eyebrows. I cover up my eyebrows. And I kind of just leave it at that. And now I don't do full white face because I used to do full white face. This is about 10, 15 years ago. But it's a little bit too scary for kids, I find, but one of the main reasons is it takes longer to apply full white face makeup, so I don't I don't bother doing it anymore. Okay, so now that I got that on there, I uh, take my red and I make some lips. I put some of my top and bottom lip and mash them together. 
that gets me a head start. And then what I do is I outline my lips and just exaggerate them a bit on the top there with those two little lip lines. And then what I do is I find my smile line and I And uh, I'm, what I do is I, I take a deep breath and I puff out my cheeks a lot of times. And I find that helps to smooth my skin and give me a flatter surface to uh, work with. And there you go. So that's my lips. And then uh, what I do is I just grab some uh, toilet paper or paper towel. And I first thing is I wash my brush. Just take all that extra paint off there. And then what I do is I, I dab my lips. I just press them down on that. And I'm just removing some of the excess red. You don't quite need that much and that just goes away. And then you outline in black. So I'm going to outline my the white around my face or my mouth and I'm going to outline around my eyes. And that really brings out the look. And that requires a steady hand and sometimes like you'll see there's a little bit of a I don't know if you can see but um, there's whites there's my my skin color between there and the white and a um, little bit there too it's not perfect it doesn't have to be because once I apply the the baby powder with the sock it kind of fills it in anyway and and it's not going to really affect it too much I'm going to go around the eyes bring it in there bring it around this eye and there and again not perfect doesn't have to be now I got an old sock here you can see that's quite red um, and that's used to again kind of just it's got a little bit of baby powder still left in it just enough to tone down that red otherwise my new sock that I'm using is gonna get red like this one which I don't want because that'll tend to pinkify my my white and then just sort of dab it in. Try not to breathe in the talcum powder. I take a step back from that cloud I create and then come back in. And I go into a, um, a baggie so it doesn't get talcum or baby powder everywhere. Then I just use a, a face cloth to brush off all that excess powder from my face. And now there's a, there's a powder, a layer of powder that's not quite into the makeup. So I just do that to get some of that last bit of powder and you can even just sort of brush it off like this. Now setting the makeup with the baby powder, it's cheaper than using the sets, setting powders that they sell. It works really well. This can stand up to light rain. I've uh, been involved in squirt gun fights by accident and the makeup will hold quite well. The only thing that's really smudged the makeup ever is when I put my nose on. Sometimes my top black line will get a little bit smudged if I've had a long day and had four or five gigs. And sometimes I'm using a, a wireless microphone and if I don't be sure to have my, um, my sponge away from my mouth uh, the, the microphone will smudge uh, my makeup a bit as well. So I use half of a, uh, half of a uh, cotton ball, tear it in half, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I apply it to my nose. I'm cleaning my nose 
of any oil because um, of course latex doesn't like oil. Now my nose I keep when I get home from a gig this is my hat I have a bibby it's part of my costume and my hat I put one of my favorite magic tricks is my sponge balls go in there my nose goes in there and my bibby goes in there so I know where it all is when I get home. My other favorite thing that I carry with me at all time is my squeaker. I like this one but I have a whole bunch of different squeakers and uh, they're awesome. If you don't know where to get them online um, you just go to a, a pet store and those uh, pet toys the plush ones usually have a squeaker inside of them the little toys that squeak. You cut it open because your dog's going to cut it open anyway and uh, salvage the squeaker out of there. I take my nose, take the uh, latex adhesive, and usually you just need maybe two or three dips. And you just sort of line the inside where it's going to rest on your nose. You don't have to fill the whole thing. You get to know it over a while. I use a B2 Pro Nose, put it on, and take it off. And now there's pronose latex left on the inside of the nose and on my nose here. And I'll know when to re-put this on. I, I'll usually pack up my car and get ready to go and, and uh, by that time it's usually ready to go back on. But usually when this wet stuff on your nose is, is clear, it's ready to put back on. This might not be quite as dry, but it's usually pretty good. So now, I'm gonna, I might be stepping out of the frame here while I put my costume on. I'm just wearing shorts and a t-shirt. My costume was way made by my wife's aunt. She's made me a couple of them. They're awesome. Actually, she's made me a total of three. One's in retirement, and the other one is a seasonal one. It's a Christmas themed. It's the same design as this one here. Um, I like this. The zipper is up in the front. Uh, so that I can go to the washroom without having to completely uh, take my costume off. You just sort of go. It's got drawstrings here. Now this is just a, if you're a sewer or you know a sewer, it was just, I, I bought this pattern and she used the pattern to make the costumes. So that goes on. It's beautiful, nice big buttons. She made me several of these bibbies with different color ties. The ties just go on with Velcro. And uh, I use this one here. And I've also got several designs of vests, different types of vests. And this is my favorite one I'm using right now because it's got the biggest pockets for me. And I use the pockets. I have inside pockets as well. I put uh, my business cards on the inside pockets. And then on my right hand pocket goes my squeaker. And my sponge balls. And I don't have my wig on yet because I don't like wearing it until I actually get to the gig. So I just put this on for now. I put my nose in my right hand pocket, or my left hand pocket, sorry. And I'm ready to go. Uh, I've got my shoes on. I don't know if I can do I'll show you guys my whole outfit uh, maybe another time when I have a picture. But this is Gizmo the Clown checking out. Wish me luck on my gigs today and uh, look forward to your comments on YouTube and uh, please like me on Facebook as well. Take care everyone.